Hello there. Uh, why is my why are my expressions just like that? My name is uh, Ricardo Escobar. Let me put there we go. Uh, good afternoon already. Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Ricardo Escobar in Twitch. Today um, I'm making a short video or a long one. I don't know. Uh, I am commemorating six months since my wife passed away. Uh, she died from colon cancer on February 28, 2022, around uh, 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, and well, before she died, uh, she, uh, she told me a couple of things that uh, stuck with me uh, really hard. Uh, the first thing that she told to me was that uh, she didn't want she didn't want it to die obviously well she she actually told me that she didn't want to die uh, at age 38 years old she died um, and after she told me that she also told me that she has a lot to live for you know uh, that she has still uh there are a lot of things that she wants to to live before she dies and and when she didn't get to live those things and and right after that she told me also uh that she wanted to go to the beach you know uh, she wanted to go to the beach and that's why we are here in vr chat in um uh, in the metaverse we are uh, in a beach right now because, uh, well, I figure, well, after six months, uh, time is flying, really. Uh, but I don't really feel any better. Uh, well, uh, maybe maybe I do. Maybe I am feeling better because uh, uh, I've been crying way less now. Uh, but I still cry from time to time, you know. And... Uh, uh, I, I try a lot of things to cope with the pain, but uh, today I want it to be about uh, my wife's life, you know. Uh, uh, she was raised and born in the town of Veracruz, uh, Boca del Rio, I think it's called. The town is called Boca del Rio, uh, which means uh, the mouth of the river in Spanish. Uh she was born in the state of Veracruz in Mexico, in the country Mexico, you know. So she's from Boca del Rio, Veracruz, Mexico. Uh, she was born uh, November 22, 1983. Um, and uh, she was the last of, I believe, uh, five... Uh, she... She is the, the youngest sister of four brothers and one and one female. So she is like uh, the little princess of the family. Um, she was the youngest, uh, and uh, I didn't know. I do not know many too much things about her, uh, about her um, childhood. Uh, other than what she told me, and uh, well, she went to a to an elementary school and preschool on the same uh, on her hometown. Uh, she didn't really tell me too many things that are remarkable, or or, or many any at all. Uh, but one thing that she mentions is that she used to be very fat when she was a child. Up until when she uh, became a teenager, and around this time is when is where I believe she develops this uh, what is going to become later her cancerous tumor. Uh, the moment that she develops this uh, tumor thing, uh, around fifteen years old, very young. Uh, she just starts having issues with something we call here in, in Mexico, we call it uh, colitis. Uh, 
that's uh, an intestine disease that is treatable and and she's making a, uh, their family are making a studies on her from time to time uh, but the doctors believe it's just a, a case of uh, colitis that is not developing properly so they are not even thinking about cancer at that time uh, so she showed me one picture when she was in high school and on this picture uh, on this picture, well, uh, she asked me to actually try to figure out, wait, there we go, maybe, I'm trying to make a good shot, but, uh, maybe that's okay, so she showed me this picture, um, a printed picture, it's not digital, uh, I don't have it digitalized, but anyway, so he, she shows me this, this picture of herself and a group of friends or, or her schoolmates, uh, and they are all sitting down uh, on the floor and someone on the floor, someone uh, standing up, you know, so, some of them are on chairs. And she basically asked me to, to try to figure out, you know, all right. She asked me to try to figure out uh, of those kids, which one is her, you know, uh, and, and obviously I guess wrong because my wife, uh, when I met her, she was very, very thin, you know, uh, she was, uh, uh, she was very thin, like uh, almost like um, having feeding issues, you know, maybe she's not eating enough. Uh, and I had always uh, know her as uh, a very thin woman, you know. Uh, but anyway, so I tried to guess who she was, and I, I and I didn't get it right. Uh, uh, it it turns out that uh, her, she on the picture was this very big chubby chubby girl, very fat, and 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 the face. The, I didn't even recognize her face at first, you know, up until she pointed out that uh, that chubby girl on the picture was her. So I guess that wrong. And then I didn't actually believe her because uh, her face was so fat that I could not recognize her face, you know. Uh, and, and I guess when I put more attention to the picture, uh, uh, I am still not convinced that she is uh, herself, but she pointed out that that's actually her, and she was really fat. So around that time, she told me that he got this pain on, on, on the intestines, you know, in the belly, and that their family actually believed it was uh, colitis, uh, 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 a colon disease. Uh, treatable, but not mo not mortal, obviously. So nobody guessed, nobody was worrying about cancer at that point. Uh, but uh, it called to my it 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 called my attention that this tumor, I guess it it was uh, it came to her at age fifteen, around fifteen, sixteen years old, and and this tumor fed on her so bad. Uh, that she basically became this very, very thin woman. She uh, she also told me that she lost weight uh, really fast, really freaking fast, you know? Uh, and she didn't know why, because uh, she was uh, basically just eating the same, nothing changed on her diet or her lifestyle, and he was losing weight, a lot of weight. So... Oh, let me, I might like to change uh, where am I sitting, maybe a, a better shot, yeah, let me get rid of that, yeah, maybe this is a better shot.
Anyway. So, uh, well, uh, after seeing that picture and after when, when my wife began with the symptoms, uh, the date was December 12th, uh, around midnight, December 12th, around mid during the night time, during the night, uh, she began with the, uh, December 12th, 2021, she began with the with the symptoms of cancer, you know, uh, really, really, uh, uh, really bad pain in the stomach, you know. So we were going to a hospital to see what's going on uh, during the night. And this is around the time where COVID restrictions were still, uh, were still on on my city. So it's not really, uh, uh, it's, it's, it wasn't a good time, you know. It never is. Uh, but anyway, so after she showed me uh, that picture, uh, and in retrospective, obviously, in retrospect, um, now I can figure out, I think, because I know the doctor, uh, but I figured that probably around that time, that, uh, that loss of weight was because of the cancer of the cancer developing on her intestines because it's around that same time where she begins with these pains in the in her belly, you know? And she has started taking medication for colitis since then. And when I was looking around, uh, when I was looking for uh, past studies, anything, uh, anything like uh, hospital related around her, to, to get more the most information possible for the doctors, uh, I found uh, a folder containing X-rays dating back up until uh, dating far back as uh, 2010. So uh, 12 years of X-rays basically, and she's been taking these X-rays continuously because. Uh, she, they are looking for something in her intestines, but they don't really know where to look. And they don't know why it's causing these pains, you know. Uh, it turns out to be that it was colon cancer all along, you know. And when she begins with the symptoms, it, it's a, I believe uh, it's either already too late or there is very little that we can do to save her life. That's what I gather from the experience, you know. But anyway, I think I, uh, I am skipping a lot of steps on the story, so I'm going to roll back a little bit. So she's telling me that uh, there are a lot of things that she wants to live for, you know. She wants to do a lot of things with her life. One of the things was to go to the beach. And she also told me that she was very afraid. She, uh, and obviously she was afraid of that of death of, of course and i didn't know at the time what to say to her uh the only thing i say to her was you know what i know it's scary i know you're afraid but i don't know what to say to you right now I, i'm here with you i love you uh, and i just stay uh, at her side you know uh, it was a really hard time for me uh, because I needed to work at the same time I wanted to be with my wife. Uh, and I needed to work because I didn't want to lose a job. I already lost a job uh, at the same time, uh, not because of my wife, because I, I, I guess I could have done better. But after my wife began with the symptoms of cancer, uh, that was on December, it's, uh, I... I I'm not putting attention to my job anymore, you know, uh, and I lose my job. Uh, I got fired from my job in January 30. Uh, January 30, 2022, I lost my job. Uh, I had savings that I was, uh, I, I got uh, some money saved because I wanted to buy a house, you know, and make a family there in a new home. 
that never came to pass, and I used those savings to pay for medical bills, because sadly in Mexico, uh, the hospital, the doctors, uh, the operations, everything is paid. In, uh, the important, the important things are paid in cash because hospital don't want to pay taxes. So the operations I paid that on cash. Uh, they didn't give me a receipt. Uh, the hospital, uh, some uh, um, during the operation days, they uh, they charged me for for a lot of money in cash, and they basically told me that if I want a receipt, if I want to basically pay taxes, uh, the bill was going to grow a lot, and I was thinking at the time, you know what? Uh, all I need is my wife to be safe. I not really uh to be healthy to 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 be back with me healthy you know, but I also thought at the time you know what these bills are re are racking up, my savings are draining up really fast you know because these are a bit these are big bills, these are not uh things that you can just uh, uh pay in, in one paycheck you know. So, uh, anyway, so I began paying for the operations in cash. They were a total of four operations. Uh, I began paying for the hospital, uh, and I see my savings draining down really fast. So it was imperative. Uh, the important thing for me was to uh, get a new job. Don't fuck up that job. Because I'm going to need the money to pay for the cancer treatment. Well, at the time, I didn't know that she got cancer, of course. But then I began to think, okay, you know what? Uh, the doctor is going to operate just to know what's going on inside of her. Because nobody knows what's inside of her. So this operation is not to fix something. It's to figure out what the hell is going on. And when the first operation came to be, uh, the doctor tried to cleanse her intestines the best he could. Uh, and he told me that he found a tumor in the in the in her colon. She found a tumor on the left side of her in the left side. Uh, there is a a corner that the that the uh, that the rectum uh, the colon is. Uh, is making a, a a turn basically on the left side uh, right there there is a tumor that is uh choking the colon so that's why she cannot go to the bathroom uh, she cannot uh, take a dump or anything because the tumor uh close the colon and there is no uh, way to uh to excrete the, the feces you know so this tumor was closing down the colon, uh, and the doctor told me that they cleanse the colon as best as they could, but they are going to need to make another operation to remove the tumor. And uh, and it's a big ball for what he's saying. It's a big ball that is choking the colon, and it's uh, it's making the food stay there, and and the food and the feces are staying there. So as we are feeding her. Uh, the food is not going anywhere. So the feces are remaining inside her system and, and that's making the, the, her body being sick, you know. And after the operation, uh, they put like a, uh, like a, uh, I don't remember the, the name in English, but it's basically uh, like this tube on her mouth that goes straight into her intestines and initially they were feeding her through that uh, tube but then uh, she began puking shit literally so the shit she was uh, she was she started puking shit through the tube on her mouth um, uh, and I was cleaning all of that uh, that was taking a lot of my time I find a new job after the operation, thankfully. 
So I I was like a, a couple of days without a job. Uh, I got I got a new job, uh, and I tried to make it work, you know. But clearly, I was not really my my head was not on my job, of course. So I already lost a job, and I was doing really bad on the on the new job, you know. And uh, but it was really important to me to to remain having income because I understood at the time that uh, if I'm lucky, if she is lucky. This is going to be uh, an an anecdote that we will tell our friends or family later, you know. But at the time, I say, well, this uh, the bills are racking up very quickly. My savings are running dry, and I was scared of of, le of of be broke, and I still have things to pay. You know, in Mexico, uh, they don't give you any service until you pay. So that's the truth. Uh, it's not like in America where you can still receive uh, attention, medical attention, and and be safe, uh, and then later on you need to pay. You know, uh, not in Mexico. If you don't have money, you're dead. And that's what happened to us. Uh, so I was getting really scared uh, about the money. Uh, but I still had a job. I was receiving money. I only lasted for like uh, two weeks, I think, without a, uh, without a job, I guess. Um, but anyway, the thing is... Uh, uh, well, I was working in the hospital uh, after the first operation. We were waiting for the next week. So I was going to stay there for an entire week with my wife. And I was cleaning her. I was uh, feeding her. I was taking her to the bathroom. Uh, uh, nothing came out of her. So the tumor was still inside. A, a week passes. Uh, but during that week, uh, waiting for the next operation, I began to realize uh, the situ a situation with her family. Uh, sadly, her mother and brothers uh, don't really love her, I think, too much. Because even her, uh, her mother herself uh, didn't really care to came prepared to stay with her. She was like, uh, if some friend comes visit you in the hospital, it, I felt it that way. Because she shows up. Uh, she comes here without uh, any breakfast. She didn't eat anything. She didn't bring any money. She didn't drink, bring uh, any food. She, she just shows up. Uh, she waves at her. She she talks to her a little bit. Uh, but we need people staying with her to clean her up, uh, you know, to do chores. And she didn't came prepared. Uh, she actually sh told me that she didn't want to spend any money. Uh, uh, and I find that like uh, bizarre. That's a bizarre concept to me because if your daughter is dying from something, your daughter is not going to... Uh, we, we are debating if she's going to live, you know. The, the last thing a mother should have in her head is uh, spending money. Uh, uh, she came on a bus instead of a taxi because she she preferred that because she saved money that way and maybe the first day okay i get it it's the first day she doesn't know uh probably she doesn't know what's going on but but i i find that hard to believe because uh uh that's something that i am a little ashamed to share but let's do it anyway uh before all of this happens my wife was no longer living with me she was living in her mother's home Okay, so she was living there for like two months before all of this happened, you know, and she was working there to 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 rent an apartment uh, that that their family built uh, on top of their house. So they uh, so the mother her mother lives out of rent, you know. Uh, her mother is a widow, so he doesn't. She doesn't have a man to provide for her, so she's living out uh, of rent. She's renting a couple of apartments on top of her house, and my wife uh, lived in her house for two months, and she was working, preparing the uh, uh, the rooms to be rented, 
you know. Uh, she was basically the landlord. She was uh, fixing stuff. I didn't knew any of this, by the way. I only knew that she uh, went to live with her mother for a couple of months. Uh, so, But I realized what she's actually doing later on. Uh, but anyway, so she rents uh, her place in Airbnb. Uh, she rents it to a couple of people and they gave her uh, five stars. The place was really good anyway. So she seems to be pretty excited. And she, the night that she comes to visit me, you know, because I'm living with my, uh, with my parents at the time because I don't have a job and I lost a lot of my income. And, uh, 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 and I basically came to my, I'm living, I actually are still living with my parents now, uh, because, uh, well, my father doesn't have a job and I'm paying for, for half of the bills at least, if not more, you know, and, and that's basically my life. I'm providing for my old folks. And I believe, uh, well, that's, uh, another thing. I believe that they are going to sacrifice me in order for them to have a, a retirement. I am the retirement plan. That's what I, I am not allowed to leave, really. Because if I leave, I'm going to spend less money on living, obviously. Uh, but my folks are not going to have uh, enough income to survive, I guess. So that's what I'm not leaving yet. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I'm not saving any money. Uh, they are basically sacrificing my life. Uh, because of the retirement, you know. Uh, so I am the sacrificial lamp, I guess. But anyway, I'm digressing. So, uh, during this week, her mother doesn't really uh, came prepare. Uh, I see uh, her brother coming from time to time. Uh, he came like twice, I think. And uh, and I began understanding why, uh, how the family, how her family is actually working. Or dysfunctional working, I guess. Uh, she has a dysfunctional family for sure. So I just tried to explain to them, to her brother and to her mother, uh, the situation. And uh, uh, and well, they didn't seem too surprised or, 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 or worried about. Even the doctor was talking to her mother and, and the mother was like, I don't want to know anything about this. And she just wandered off. She doesn't have to have any responsibility about anything. It's like, uh, okay, but why are you telling me this, doctor? Uh, that, why is the doctor talking to me? Because you are the mother, you know? And eventually, if I run out of money, your family needs to step in in any manner possible. And I just told her that, and she didn't really want it uh, to get up to that point because uh, the mother and my wife were very uh, hasty going to very expensive doctors, you know, uh, and these expensive doctors didn't really find what was wrong about her. And I was just spending a lot of money, around $500 a session. Uh, I mean, and these uh, fancy doctors they were just prescribing Pepto-Bismol to her. So I wasted a lot of time and money uh, for some fancy doctor on a fancy office just to tell me that she needs to take some Pepto-Bismol. I mean, so anyway, so she was really unlucky. She died because of that, I guess. And uh, although I was paying for treatment at the beginning. I was letting my wife and my mother-in-law taking making all the decisions. And probably that was my mistake. Because uh I guess I guess women believe that going to fancy places are the best options and, and that's not true at all. So this uh young the doctor seems to be like pretty young in experience because he's young and in a really fancy office. So what we're really paying is having uh, the chance to get into this fancy office uh, with view to the sea, you know, to that has a view to the beach. And it's a really cool place, but I don't really care about that. I want to know uh, 
if my uh, what's wrong with my wife and ha and what can we do to to save her life you know and, and this guy just does uh, uh i think she he tries to do her his job uh he does a, an ultrasound on her he sa he says that he didn't find anything wrong and he just uh, sent her off with petal small uh and i don't know uh, I think he f he missed the mark for a lot, but anyway. So my mother-in-law, uh, her mother, and and her brother, they don't really seem uh, to care too much about what's going on. So a week uh, uh, during this week, she is is uh, still coming unprepared. He's coming late because uh, I've been uh, staying at her uh, at my wife's side for for most of the day. You know, I don't sleep too much. I am working and I don't get to sleep. Uh, I'm doing all of this uh, inside the hospital room. So I'm living at the hospital at this time. And my father and my mother are bringing me clothes, are bringing me uh, food and a lot of coffee. And I am staying there the entire time, uh, trying to work in the waiting room. Uh, I'm trying to make mid uh, I'm trying to do my job with a with my work laptop inside the room, uh, and I don't know. Uh, her mother came to visit for a little while, and then she leaves. You know, uh, she came unprepared. She doesn't uh, buy any food. She does. She came here unprepared. She uh, and I used that time to sleep, you know. So one time or a couple of times, she 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 gets to the hospital very late, you know. And, and I am over exhausted, you know. I haven't slept, and I waiting for her. Uh, she arrives like three hours later, and her excuse was because uh, she's late because uh, she needed to sh shop for groceries, I guess, for the day, and to make breakfast to to her two sons. I mean, what? You know, so, and I, and I was getting really angry at her family now, uh, because it, it came clear to me that they don't really care if she dies or not. And, and, and what they do is very telling. Uh, when I asked her about it, she told me that her her children are the most important thing in the world, that she's given the life, uh, she's willing to give her life for them. But then again, uh, when we ask her for money to pay for blood transfusions, you know, uh, then all of a sudden she doesn't remember her, her debit card pen, you know, so, uh, and we were basically uh, dragging her to the uh, uh, to the ATM to get the money. And she, if my wife didn't get that blood, she could have died that day. Uh, it was that dramatic. So my mother did a great job helping me getting her to the ATM and getting the money. Uh, and my mother-in-law was not uh, was not happy about it. She didn't want to spend money on her. And I was still waiting for a paycheck to have money to do something else. Uh, but anyway, I, just, I, I I began selling shit, you know. I began uh, selling even stocks. I, I no longer hold any stocks. Uh, I sold all my, uh, all my stocks. Uh, I liquidated, basically. I got very little money with that. And, uh, but it was good enough to keep paying for the bills, you know. Because in Mexico, you need to pay day by day. If you don't pay uh, a day, they don't allow you to remain there for the next day. You, you need to leave, you know. Welcome to welcome to socialism. <laughs> uh, there are government hospitals, but, but if you go there, you're pre you, you go there and you don't have a, a, heal, heal, a self-healing factor as good as Wolverine, <laughs> Uh, you're dead. Yeah, you're basically dead. Doctors there don't are overworked, underpaid. There are no medicines. So public health sounds like a good idea until you see it implemented in a real world scenario. You know. 
But anyway, so my mother-in-law uh, is not really helping me out here, you know. Uh, I am falling asleep during my during work meet, during my work meetings. Uh, I'm falling behind on my new job, and they are noticing. My new job employers are noticing that I'm falling behind. Of course, because I'm not sleeping. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent on my job, thinking of my job, uh, and I'm trying to look for ways to get more money. So the day of the operation arrived, and uh, my wife got. Uh, a long operation going on uh, and the doctors uh, and after the operation the doctor calls me and he tells me you know what uh, let me we just remove the uh, a tumor uh, from your wife uh, so what they did is that they removed a section of the colon and the section of the colon that they remove contains the tumor but there are bad news. The tumor fell too hard when you touch it. That's a, that seems to be like a very bad news. Uh, another bad news is that they needed to remove, uh, besides the colon, they needed to remove a gland. Uh, I believe uh, the endocrinous gland that is surrounding the colon. Because they, uh, they detected that there were... Uh, uh, the tumor was spreading to the endocrinous gland and which uh, the endocrinous system spreads to the entire body. So that's a really, really, really bad, uh, bad news. So uh, the doctor told me that I need to take this tumor to a pathology lab and run some tests on that and just to know if the tumor is malign or benign, you know. Uh, so I'm taking this tumor as, as fast as I can to the pathology lab. And they told me, you know what, we are going, it's going to take 15 days to, to do this. So I say, oh my God, that's way too much time. You know, we need this information as soon as possible. But anyway, so, uh, so during this time, uh, my wife is resting and recovering in the hospital. And after a week after her second intervention, uh, we take her back to to somebody's home, you know. And I and I obviously thought because she's my wife, uh, maybe she was going to be taken back to my place. Uh, well, not really my place because I don't have a home. To my father's uh, home, you know, because I'm living there. Uh, but she was living with her mother, so uh, everything was planned for me to take her to, to my father's place. Uh, at the last minute, uh, my wife and my mother-in-law told me that they want to go uh, uh, to her place, to her mother's home. Uh, so what I say is, oh my God, why? And they told me that uh, she feels more comfortable there anyway. I don't know. The thing is that we don't go. Uh, the reality is that if my if if her mother or her family wants to visit her, they need to spend money and travel to another home. So it's going to be cheaper and easier if she remains on her mother's home. And she was living there anyway. So we were separated anyway, you know? Uh, yeah, she left me, but anyway, uh, the thing is, uh, uh, she, they go and they try to uh, recover and she spends uh, 15 days there resting. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for nurses to take care of her uh, because she needs a spe uh, special care. Uh, she needs to, uh, after the operation, she got this big uh, scar on her tummy, you know, because they basically opened her up uh, like a chicken, you know. And, and uh, well, uh, I hired nurses to keep watch on her 24-7 because I didn't trust her family to take care for her, you know. And the wound needed to be cleaned twice a day. 
And, and it's uh, and that's very dangerous. It's, it's something without training tries to do that because it could get infected if not done properly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know. So uh, she spends around two weeks in her in her mother's home, and uh, during that time, I'm visiting her as soon, uh, 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 as often as possible. We watch uh, the Witcher uh, Netflix series together. We finished that. We began watching the last season of uh, uh, Cobra Kai series. And when I left that day, uh, I go back a couple of days after, and she told me that uh, she watched the... She didn't wait for me, that she watched the series herself alone. And that's the moment I, I, I told to myself, oh my God, why? We always wait for each other to watch Netflix. But uh, then I get it. She's afraid that uh, she's not going to be around anymore to watch that series anymore. So that's why she watched it without me. And I get it now, you know? Uh, but anyway. So... Uh, after 11 days, not 15, after 11 days, I got a notification. Uh, I, I think it was 11 or 12 days, I don't remember. Maybe 13 days, I don't remember. So, But before uh, before 15 days, uh, they called me from the pathology lab and they told me that they have uh, the results. And as, I, and as soon as I get the call, I told my father, my mom, and we all go... Uh, we all got. We all uh, went to the pathology lab to to know the results, and we are. I'm trying to call my mother-in-law, uh, but she uh, she she turned off her cell phone because she want she didn't want to be disturbed, you know. Uh, so we we even visit her house on the way, you know, and she wasn't there. Uh, one of her brothers. Uh, answered the door and, and and he told me that her mother went to to visit someone like uh, like nothing is happening you know she just uh, went out to distract herself to talk to a friend and she went visit a friend and I and I like uh, uh, but your daughter is actually uh, under your care now what why would you leave to to re for recreational purposes I don't get it but anyway. Um, uh, so she wasn't home so because the plan was to you know what uh, pathology lab just called me and they have the results maybe you want to know what happened with the results you know so we get to the pathology lab I read the result myself and it's confirmed that the tumor is malign and it's cancer in the column uh, and it's a very aggressive cancer uh so the tumor is cancer, is, is malign, it's colon cancer, and that's not even the, the, the hardest bad news to, to swallow because uh, the tumor touched the endocrine system and the endocrine system spreads to the entire body. It seems like cancerous cells were spreading through the entire body using the endocrine system. So now uh, my wife has uh, cancer all over her body, and, uh, and and that was the hardest truth to swallow, you know. So I told, I gave the results to the doctor. My mother-in-law was not, uh, we we were not able to locate my mother-in-law. Uh, and uh, I told to the doctor by phone, and the doctor told me, "Oh my God, those are really bad news." Uh, and I'm like, oh, "Of course, there are be really bad news." The doctor told me that he's not going to be able to help me out with cancer uh, because he's a gastrointestinologist or something like that. He's not a, a cancer doctor. So I need to find a cancer doctor and he gave me the contact for one. I called to him and uh, he basically told me that uh, before going to visit him, uh, she needs to be walking straight by herself and eating well. She doesn't need to be in a, in a bed. 
he's not going to take a look at her unless she's able to work by herself and, and do everything by herself, you know. So my wife was not in that position at all. So uh, the doctor also told me that if she managed to get uh, uh, into the uh, well, if she if he managed to treat my wife, I must consider that the treatments are really expensive. Uh, because the medicine for treating that specific cancer is very expensive. It's around, uh, I believe it's uh, more than $2,000 for a box with uh, with pills that last for a week, you know? 10 pills are going to cost me around more than $2,000. Uh, and I need to buy those. Those are not optional. I need to buy those and uninterrupted, I need to give my wife that medicine. And the box with 10 pills costs around 2,000 bucks, $2,000. And I was, at that time, I was like, how the fuck am I going to pay for that, you know? Because I am already uh, short on funds, uh, as it is. And I'm supposed to buy, uh, to pay $2,000 medicine a week. Uh, and that's just one medicine. I don't even know how much they are going to charge me for chemo or whatever else is required, you know. But it came clear to me at, th at that moment that money was going to become an issue very soon. Uh, I didn't know how soon, but I know it was going to be soon. So, uh... Then again, uh, after two days, I was able to locate my, to talk with my, uh, my mother-in-law. And she went to another city to visit uh, a friend. And she came back after the weekend. And I'm like, uh, why? I mean, she went basically on vacation during this, the, the hardest time on, on the life of her daughter. Uh, so I explained to her the situation, you know. I explained to her that I was running dry on funds and that uh, they need to step up when, I, when I'm when i dry, when I'm broke, they need to take over with the expenses. Uh, she seems like confounded because she actually told me that she was paying for everything. And I'm like, no, you're not paying for anything really. Uh, she told me that because she paid uh, two days uh, she paid uh, $500 for two days in the hospital, and that just was the deposit. The deposit was $500. And I reimbursed my wife that money. Uh, if she didn't get that money back ever, well, that's on my wife and her. But I actually reimbursed that money, those $500. And I believe that she actually thought that $500 was uh, paying for everything, you know? Uh, yeah, uh, my mother-in-law was delusional, but anyway. Uh, the thing is, uh, she actually believed she was paying for everything. Uh, oh, wait, and we asked her for money for the blood also. So so I don't remember how much was that, but I think it, it could have been like, uh, what, how much? $200, if I recall. So $700. Uh, and uh, she actually believed that that money paid for a lot, uh, for everything, basically. And uh, I ha <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but that's very far from the truth. And when I mentioned her the amount of money that I already spent, she was like surprised. And she wanted an explanation of uh, if this money was really being paid. And... and that's where reality began to sink inside her head. I showed her the bills, uh, and she didn't believe in believe me after showing her the bills. And at this time, my wife gave me her debit card, 
where she and I see the amount that she is saving there. She has uh, a little bit more uh, around a, a million pesos. Uh, that would be around uh, I don't know, around a hundred thousand dollars, probably less. I don't know. I I don't. I'm not good with math. Let me let me check something really quick. <laughs> it's not even that much. Uh, she got forty-seven thousand six hundred and nineteen dollars on on the bank. So. Uh, forty-seven thousand six hundred dollars in the bank. Uh, that was the money she got saved. Uh, and I began using that money because that money helped to pay for the tour operation. You know, and the doctors were not taking. Uh, they were. Uh, they were not giving me tickets. You know. Uh. Uh, tickets for the for for the service they were only receiving cash to avoid paying taxes you know so the argument was you know what uh, if you want to receive you may you are going we are going to charge you even more you know uh, and and the doctor that was going to operate my wife uh, then uh, he didn't even uh, accept that he he plain told me uh, if you want to receive, I'm not making an operation on her. So, so I decided, you know what? Okay, fine. I'm going to pay in cash, I guess. Uh, and I didn't get a receipt for that either. But anyway. Uh, and that's the truth. Uh, for the same reason that the hospital and the doctor didn't want to pay, uh, didn't want me... Uh, the important charges, the important things on the bills, the important bills, uh, I paid them on cash and I didn't get a receipt for that. Okay. Why? Because that way uh, in Mexico, we are getting that set a lot. Okay. So that way the doctors and the hospital don't need to pay that much in taxes. You know? Uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, I began using the money and, uh, and the money on her account began to dry, began to drain fast because I was already draining fast. So after the tear operation happened, this tear operation was really important. Uh, I recall, uh, a lot of things that happened that day during this time before the tear operation. Uh, I was in a in a very hard place to be because the doctor told me that the cancer was uh, destroying the the plaquettes I think it's called. So my wife needed a big transfusion of blood, plasma, and pla uh, and, and plaquettes just to even attempt the operation. Uh, my wife was losing plasma and was losing. Uh, uh, white cells at a very fast rate. So I needed at least 10 units of plasma and 9 units of, pla of plaquettes or white cells before the operation. Uh, and, and the blood bank uh, gave me around uh, 6 in total. Uh, and that was really hard to come by, you know. Uh, but I but I understood that uh, the doctor told me that if I don't find that, I they, he's not going to intervene my wife, and that meant that she's going to die. So I managed to, uh, with the help of my family and and all the money I could get, I could get, we managed to get the blood, you know, uh, because blood is not just existing; we need people donating. And they were not enough blood in the blood banks for my for my wife. That was just the fact. So anyway, so uh, I'm not going to say how we managed to find the blood, but I'm going to say this: uh, that make me go bankrupt. Okay, that's what I'm going to say. 
So, so getting that blood successfully uh, make me go bankrupt. Okay, and for to pay for the operation, uh, I needed to use the money from my wife's saving savings account. And my mother-in-law was really angry when I paid for the operation with with that money, uh, because she she actually demanded me to to give back the money, and I uh, I don't have any money, and I used the money to save the life of uh, my wife, you know, your daughter. So, so no, I not I, I don't even have that money anymore. So anyway, she is really angry. She calls her brother, her sons, I mean. Uh, and they basically bully me into give them back uh, the debit card. And I comply, obviously, because it's not really my money. So I give them back the uh, the debit card. And I ask them to use the money to save her life. Uh, obviously, they didn't do that. Uh, the second I gave that, I gave that card, uh, I knew that my wife's life was forfeit. So they didn't use the money for anything else. I believe I was able, before doing that, I was able to pay for another day in the hospital. So she could stay in the hospital for a single day. Uh, and after that, I need to find uh, an, a new place to put her. So I moved some strings and I was able to get her into the uh, a public hospital in, in Veracruz, the regional hospital in Veracruz. And it's a it's a public hospital, so you don't you you don't pay for the service per se, you know. Uh, but it's a public hospital. It's free healthcare, okay? It's free healthcare, which means in real world, uh, it means that you are not getting anything, you know. Uh, there are no medicines. The doctors just fly by. They, they don't really take care of you because they don't care. They are overworked, underpaid. Uh, and it's a public hospital. What do you expect? You are not paying for anything. So, uh, and in that hospital, when uh, the last uh, amount of money I got, I used that for an ambulance. I need to pay for a private ambulance. Uh, and they took her from the hospital back to to the new hospital and they put her on a bed and th and that's the last uh, bed my wife was going to be at you know she died on that bed uh, the doctors that were walking uh they checked her they checked her chart and they basically say to her mother because she stayed there for a while, because now she uh, since she has the money, uh, now I make her. You know what? I'm not going to sign off the responsive uh, letter here. You need to sign her in because you are the responsible parent now. You have the money, right? Well, uh, you you want the right to have your money? Well, there it is. Now you had to sign in. And be responsible for your daughter because you are not allowing me to take care of her anymore. And she didn't. Ra she didn't like that. She actually refused to sign in. But uh, since the doctor told her that if she didn't, if somebody is not signing her in, they are not going to get her. You know. So I told her, well, I don't have any more money. So if if half an hour passes and she's still in the ambulance, you don't need to pay for that because I don't have any more money. And she said, oh, it's going to cost me money. Then I'm going to sign the papers in, okay? Uh, and then I understood that this woman only loves money. She doesn't love any other human beings. She, she just see other human beings as tools and she just cares about her money, you know? And be, and be herself comfortable. If that costs the life of her children, she doesn't care. At least she didn't care for her daughter, which is really sad. Uh, but anyway, after a while, uh, I was visiting her. I went to donate more blood. I went to get. Uh, I, I was able to find some money, uh, but not not near enough. Uh, oh, by the way, around this time, I lost and my my new job. I lost it. 
you know, uh, manage management talks to me and they sympathize with my pain, with what I'm going through, you know, so they are willing to give me a third and last chance to redeem myself. But I didn't care, you know, I didn't really care at all. I just want them to to fire me and give me uh, uh, my my liquidation check and I could use that to buy medicine for my wife. Uh, my attention was entirely on my wife, you know, uh, and I lost another job. So I basically lost like uh, one, I, lo I lost two jobs during this entire ordeal, you know, one, two, yeah, I lost like two jobs during this time. Uh, and they were looking for a new job for me, uh, I guess. But I really did, didn't care. I just want them to fire me and give me more money to buy medicine. That's all I was thinking about. I didn't really care about my job anymore. And I remember that there was a time where my job was the most important thing in my life. But not anymore. Not even now. But anyway. So uh, I get my wife uh, a, 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 like a, a mattress, a special mattress. Uh, that is uh, useful for cancer patients because this special mattress gets filled with air and it's an uh, auto-regulating mattress. So some parts of the mattress grow and others go down. Uh, the mattress does this to simulate movement because when people stay in bed for a long period of time, and I'm talking days, uh, they began developing like bruises around their bodies. So I managed to get this special mattress for her. Uh, but obviously, uh, this special mattress costs a lot of money. Uh, and I'm not in control anymore. So my, my, uh, my in-laws, uh, they were not putting any attention to the mattress. So they lost the mattress in the hospital. They did, uh, and I realized this because when I was there changing her, I was changing the, uh, the sheets on the bed, you know? I was helping the nurse because the nurse could not do it by himself or herself. So I was helping the nurse and we were changing her beds, her sheets, you know? Cleaning her, uh, all of that. And, uh, and I realized, hey, where is the mattress I got for her? And it turns out that my in-laws didn't know where the mattress was. So I began this quest. So my wife has been here for a week already, and she's already suffering uh, with bruises on her back because you guys don't even put attention to where the fucking mattress is, you know? So I began this quest to look for the mattress. I go to the septic tank because they told me that probably the mattress got uh, uh, got took out to the septic tank to be washed later. And I go to the septic tank. Uh, after donating blood, my white cells are low. So I get an, in an infection on my mouth. Uh, I get an infection on my skin. You know, my, my teeth became very black because I got an infection there. Uh, and I needed to fix that later, I guess. Uh, so donating blood uh, makes you weak and your immune system suffers too. So think about think about that. Anyway, so I go to the septic tank. I don't find the mattress there. I go to x-rays. I go to, topogra to tomography. I go to, uh, I go to a lot of places that she has been. And I talk to a lot of people in the hospital during days. I, I've been looking for this mattress for days now. The only place that I haven't visited is uh, ER. And I'm not allowed to go in there because there is an armed guard on ER. And uh, it turns out that the mattress was there all along, you know? Uh, so I need to call a nurse to, to bring that mattress, but it takes like an entire day just to do that. And, and finally, my wife gets the mattress, but uh, I don't know. Uh, my in-laws are just, uh, they don't really care. They don't give a fuck. Uh, when I was, uh, guarding my wife during the night shift, her brother was sleeping on the floor next to her. And on, on his sleep, he kicks, I don't know why, 
but he kicks the bed really, really, really hard. He kicks the bed really hard, and at the same time, a nurse and myself are uh, transfusing her some blood. When he kicks the bed, uh, he hurted my wife very bad, you know? And uh, it's a very toxic family. And when I uh, got married with my wife, I didn't know them really. But now I can say you this. Um, when you marry someone, you're not marrying a woman. You're marrying her entire family too. So uh, if you're considering marrying someone, get to know your in-laws. If you see red flags, walk away. It's not worth it. But anyway... So, uh, my wife stays there, and uh, they, my in-laws don't spend any money. But uh, around that time, they asked me to give back the money. So, we get into an arrangement that uh, I'm going to give them the money I had left, uh, and I'm going to show them the receipts from the hospital, you know? So... I didn't go to many receipts because not all the expenses get receipts, you know. So, but I, uh, I give them all the receipts, and my my mother-in-law was in. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm? Anyway, so my mother-in-law. Uh, was believing, was thinking that she was going to receive uh, the entire money or almost all of the money. The truth is that I spent uh, a lot of money from her, from my wife's savings account. Well, not really that much. Let me see how much money did I actually spend. Uh, I spent $3,780. So $3,000 is, is pretty much almost nothing compared to the amount of money I spent. Remember that I was saving for a home, you know. But anyway, uh, the thing is that she demanded me those, uh, to give her back those $3,780. And I didn't have them, you know. So what ended up happening is that I gave her the receipts and I not was going to give back those $3,700. That was the truth. So she got really, really, really mad with me. You know, uh, her, uh, uh, her son signs a receipt for the money. And w we were square on that regard. Then... Next day, uh, when I come to visit my wife, uh, the guard uh, on the entrance of the hospital, because this is COVID, uh, there is a still the COVID restrictions here. They only allow two people for patients per patient uh, uh, to be inside the hospital. So uh, when I call my in-laws, uh, my in-laws, uh, her brother, my my wife's brother, told me that uh, her mother decided that I was not welcome anymore. So she was really pissed about the money. That's for sure. So in re uh, in retribution for using the money, uh, I was not allowed to see my wife anymore or take care of her or anything. So. Uh, I remember that I cried a lot outside the hospital and I felt really frustrated uh, and I didn't care. I was crying in front of uh, everybody on the entrance, you know. I I tried to control myself, but I was not able to control myself. Uh, I was crying so fucking bad that uh, uh, I, I believe uh, like a Christian leader that was around there was uh, came to conform me and, and asked me to join like a singing group that he was getting down uh, down the street. But it's like a Christian singing group. And I said, nah, uh, look, I know you, are, uh, you want to recruit people. And it's obvious that uh, I am suffering a lot right now. 
and it's going to make me very susceptible to be recruited by a by a cult. But uh, I don't need this right now. So I uh, I told him to go away, and and he did get away. So and I never seen him again. But anyway, uh, I was crying a lot. Uh, I, I was not able to work, you know, uh, because I was very, uh, imp I don't know what happened to me. I, it, it took like a lot of willpower just to, just to work after getting those news. Uh, I tried to talk to my mother-in-law again. She didn't answer my calls. Uh, and her brother didn't answer my calls either, you know, but the next day, uh, because here in Mexico, when you donate blood, you have the chance to, you need to pay for every single unit of blood that you are uh, going to use. So everything is with money here. Nothing is for free in Mexico. So free healthcare, my ass. Uh, anyway, so uh, I believe that when I gave him the receipts, uh, the, the 10 units of blood, I think he used like around he end up using around 19 units of blood and plasma and, and plaquettes in the end. So uh, he got all those receipts and in the receipt is, is the, uh, is declared. There is a description that reads that if you uh, bring donation uh, certificates, uh, basically a paper that says that somebody donated blood in, in the name of the patient, then uh, they give you the, mo the deposit back. They give the deposit back to you. So uh, my brother-in-law decided that it was a good idea to ask me for, uh, for donation receipts, you know? Uh, and I didn't even get any myself. So. so he was desperate. He wanted people now to donate blood and to give him the receipts because he wanted the money. And he was like desperate. He's bu he's bullying me again, asking me for those uh, for those papers for those uh, certificates, you know, because what he wants is the money, uh, the deposit money, uh, and most of the money, uh, most of the uh, seven thousand, I mean three thousand seven hundred dollars, most of that money uh, was for those unit of blood. You know, so 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 I guess he figured that he can actually recover the money if he gets the uh, people to donate and give him the certificates. You know, so he was like desperate, uh, and this level of dedication I never seen him so dedicated to get this money. Uh, but when when my wife was in need of uh, of something, he was never around. He didn't really care. You know. But, but the second you, you tell them, oh, there is a lot of money, you get the certificates. Now they suddenly have uh, all the energy and time in the world, you know. But anyway, uh, I managed to slip by the hospital guards uh, a couple of times during the, during the, the early mornings around 3 a.m. Uh, when there is a Metal Gear style, you know. <laughs> So when there is a shift on, on the guards, uh, I managed to, to evade guards and get into the hospital. Uh, uh, I, I discovered a, a hidden route on emergencies on ER. So you can get inside the hospital there when there are no, when the guards are, are changing uh, shifts. So I managed to get into the hospital there and I get to my wife's bed and, and I and I get to see her a couple of times before she dies. Uh, and and I uh, when I'm with her, uh, I ignore my wife, my my mother in law. Uh, my wife managed to ask me why I'm not there. And I tell her because your mother didn't want me here. She, she actually doesn't allow me to be here. Uh, and my wife seemed surprised because my wife told me, my mom told me that you were working and that's why you are not coming to see me. And then that, that's where I actually saw uh, what real evil is in the world, you know. Because you, you listen to evil all the time, you know. Uh, someone just decapitated in Mexico. Uh, an entire family gets... Uh, 
get shot uh, against a wall in Mexico during the day. Uh, an entire family gets incinerated inside the car. That happens all the time, you know. Uh, but when you see it firsthand, not on some screen somewhere, you know, uh, and that's just a little bit of evil that I managed to experience by myself. And I, and I say, wow. So, so she just not, uh, she didn't just remove me from the equation. She actually lied about why I'm not there with her. Uh, but I managed to 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 set the 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 the, uh, the score the score straight, you know, with my wife. Uh, and I say goodbye the first time. And I managed to see her again a second time, you know. Uh, and every single, uh, uh, in my mind, uh, I was thinking maybe this is going to be the last time I'm going to see her, you know. The last time I see her, my wife is far gone. She's not, I don't think she knew I was with her. Uh, I spent like uh, four, five, five hours around, around her, telling her that I love her, that I'm with her, uh, uh, you know. And I'm chanting this, I love you, I love you, I love you, baby, you know. Uh, and I'm telling her that everything is going to be fine, that she needs to be strong, all of this bullshit. It was fucking bullshit. She was never going to make it. Uh, and uh, she's very drunk, I guess, uh, or, or in pain. Uh, and the nurse approached me and told me that my wife needs uh, a special medicine to stop an inner... Uh, an inner hemorrhage you know they need medicine they already told her mother days ago but her mother didn't want to spend money buying a special medicine i i asked her about it and she told me that uh she's going to get the medicine in, in a in a cheaper pharmacy you know but uh the nurse actually told me that there are no uh, cheaper pharmacies this is a special medicine you know uh, and I didn't want to fight her anymore, you know. Uh, I do remember uh, calling her out on her bullshit inside the hospital because she she get into my nerves. Uh, and I do actually remember what she said to me. She said to me, uh, "What are you asking me for to buy this medicine? Don't you see how this is affecting me?" And 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 I just lost it there, you know. Uh, I basically uh, told her, this is not about you, your your daughter is dying, and all you care about is how this makes you feel, you know, you're a really bad mother, you don't even care about your children, and, and, and he snaps at me, you know, uh, she actually drops the ad of, be, of being the good mother, and I get to see her real colors in the end. You know, she snaps at me, uh, she curses me, she hates me, whatever. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> you know, uh, let evil people uh, think whatever they want about me. I don't give a shit. You know, uh, and, and that's when it hit me. After that day, I realized, why do I care what people on Twitter or any other social media say about me? You know? Uh, and suddenly, just like that, I stopped being uh, too worried about anything I see on the internet, you know, because it's not really, it's not really there, you know. Uh, it's some message that got rendered by some JavaScript framework, you know. It's just text. It's nothing. Uh, it's nothing really. Even this, you know. I am. In, I am in a beach so to speak but uh there is nothing here really i'm just in my room sitting in a in a very uncomfortable chair by the way uh so i don't know so nothing here is real and at the same time when you interact with somebody else now suddenly it, it, although it's not really real for example when you talk with someone in VR chat in the metaverse you know, uh, you are interacting with a real human being. So that's why I don't discard it completely. But anyway, so uh, during these hard times, I failed to mention something really important, by the way. My wife died uh, February 28, 
2022 around 8.30 a.m. And they specify this to me around 8.30 a.m. And I, what I, the first thing I think is, well, that's the time where the nurses check on their patients, you know? So what I gather is that her family is not really putting attention to her and that she died the night before, you know? And that nobody realized it up until the next morning. So with that level of, uh, they don't, they didn't really care about her life. You know, they did, and and the nightmares I get from time to time are basically uh, that I didn't know in what condition she died, uh, but I'm pretty sure that her mother was not there holding her hand when she passed away. There was not her family there. And what I am afraid of is that uh, uh, that she died in darkness. Uh, because in the hospital, they turn off all the lights because it's a public hospital. They save money that way. So probably she was in a really dark place, literally. And she was looking at the at the ceiling, probably, or at the side of her bed, and nobody was there to hold her hand when she died. That she died alone in a cold, uh, lonely place where nobody actually cared for her. And, and and that haunts me, you know. But I guess I I I don't know. But that's what I uh, that's the course of being smart, you know. You figure things out really quickly. So, the the only thing that protects my psyche from that is not knowing, for sure. Well, I'm, but I'm guessing. So uh, her family is really mad at me because uh, she dies and because uh, uh, I use the money. So I'm not allowed to... to uh, at this time, I don't really know for sure where is she at. Uh, I was not on the funeral. I was not on the uh, velatorium. Nothing. Uh, so I don't know anything. Uh, well, I do now because uh, it turns out that I worked for the police one time for the federal police as a database engineer. And I still got my credentials from back in the day and they still work. And it turns out that one of my brothers-in-law is actually being followed by, uh, by the federal police. So... They are tracking his every movement with his cell phone. Uh, so, and he's a deserter, by the way. So he was in the military and he deserted. So the government is still tracking his every movement. So I used that data and I actually saw how during the morning he, uh, he wake up he went from home to the hospital, I guess, to, to relieve her mother. And then from there to a BBOBA bank, I guess, to get money for the funeral. And I see uh, his entire day is going back and forth uh, to a crematorium. So I believe that my wife was cremated. And then to, uh, to the cemetery. Uh, and... Yeah. Uh, after that, I believe that someone on IT, on the police side, detected my intrusion. And they uh, removed my, my credentials altogether. But I already got what I wanted, you know. Uh, so I know, I think I know where she is uh, buried at, you know, the cemetery. And I believe that she was cremated. Uh, and all that just from uh, from queries on databases on the police, you know. So, uh, if you are watching this and you manage to understand English, uh, the police is keeping tabs on you. The federal police is keeping tabs on you. And I'm not going to tell you why. <laughs> but it's not because you deserted. It's not that. 
It's something way worse. But I'm not here to say anything about that. Besides, uh, after my wife died, I promised to myself that I don't want anything to do anymore with that family. Uh, or to anybody. Uh, and I became like, uh, I think Fia called me. Uh, she's a YouTuber. He called me uh, Hikikomori. Uh, and I Google about it. And it means uh, Hikikomori is a Japanese term for a hermit, basically. It's a person that doesn't go out from his room. And he lives his life inside a room. And he never goes outside uh, her home. And well... And I I, I would like to say that I agree actually, because I've been uh, in this house in this house for around two years and a half now, and I haven't come out other than to go for groceries from time to time, you know. And recently I not even doing that because my parents go buy the groceries for me, so I spend months uh, inside the home and I never leave, you know. So I am a hikikomori. Maybe not a hundred percent hikikomori, but I will say at least an eighty percent hikikomori. The only times that I go out is to buy groceries, and that's it. You know, uh, everything I do happens in this room. I work in this room. I play video games in this room. So my free time I spend it here too. So. I have spent a lot of my time on this very same room. And now, with VR chat and the metaverse, uh, I am spending way more. With this headset, I am spending way more time here, even. So it's, it's, a, it's an enabling device. This uh, headset is enabling me to be a hikikomori and not suffer for not going out. Because look at me, I am on the beach right now. There is a. Uh, that's. That's the cruiser there. And this is a beautiful beach, by the way. Maybe in the video you are not going to appreciate the beauty, the beauty of this beach. But the reality is that uh, it's a wonderful beach. It looks amazing. The water is so clear. It's green and turquoise from time to time. It looks beautiful. It's so clean. Everything is so clean and so beautiful. It's a really... Beautiful beach. I, I would hope that uh, my wish was that my wife managed to uh, to see the beach one last time, you know. But that never happened. But anyway, that's the uh, my entire full story. And after that, I lost faith in humanity altogether for a little while. Uh, and at this time, uh, and my... And I no longer look for romantic relationships anymore. I became a, a, a hardcore, how do you call it, asexual. Uh, I even stopped jerking off altogether. Uh, I, I, I watch porn from time to time, but I, I no longer jerk off anymore. It's just like, a, uh, I think it triggers something in my brain when I watch uh, intimate relationships. Or, have, or people having sex, because immediately I recall my wife and me having sex, obviously, and then I get depressed immediately. And and all the libido that I, I, I build up, up up until that moment goes away. So I've been, uh, I think I've been like, uh, uh, I've been like six since my wife died. So it's going to be, and even more, because I'm not, Obviously, with all that, so it's been since this entire year, I haven't jerked off even once. So, no. Uh, yeah. Sadly, uh, I cannot feel proud about that because of the reasons. Uh, but I have to admit that I uh, became a more thin man. Uh, uh, I became healthier, that's for sure. Uh uh, and I'm not making exercise, but because I was donning blood, the doctors told me that if I don't consume sugar, I don't consume salt, if I don't cons uh, consume uh, uh, flour, the three white powders, uh, my blood is going to be doing great, you know? 
So uh, I began the lifestyle uh, the second the doctor told me because that's going to give me better blood. So I removed salt, sugar, and flour from my diet, or at least uh, I try to because I, I do eat bread from time to time, uh, but not as before. That's for sure. No more, uh, no more Coca Cola, no more Pepsi, no more anything like that. Um, I don't even put sugar on my coffee. No more sugar on my coffee. I don't put sugar on anything now. If if the thing doesn't have sugar or salt already, I'm not putting any any extra on that. I don't even put salt on my food anymore. But anyway, uh, and now I lost a lot of weight, but I don't feel sick. I actually feel stronger. Uh, my brain was best. Uh, I don't know. I think not jerking off and having better diet is helping me a lot. Shocker. What a shocker, right? <laughs> but anyway, I lost a lot of weight. Uh, when my family sees me, they compliment my body shape. Uh, and they tell, they tell me I look really handsome now that I'm thinner, you know. And uh, and I guess I had my wife to, to thank for that, I guess. Uh, although I would rather be a fat ass motherfucker and be with my wife than be uh, thin and good looking and be without my wife. Uh, but anyway, I managed to uh, to toll all this way through up until the end, I guess, because I'm going to finish it. Uh, and I haven't cried even once, so, so that's an improvement on my part, you know. I'm probably going to cry uh, during the night time, but at least this video uh, uh, is going to come out clean, I guess. Well, uh, I guess that's going to be all for the time being. I'm going to take a break, and I'm going to be back in VR chat to make new friends, probably. Uh, uh, and probably, uh, I don't know. Many new friends, or maybe get in contact with old friends. Uh, who knows? But I wanted to do this today. Because uh, today is, uh, is August 28, 2022. Six months ago, my wife passed away. So that's... Uh, I want to finish with that, I guess. So... You, I, I guess uh, there is not really a moral on the story. Take what you wish with the story, I guess. Uh, and I still don't know what I'm going to be doing with my with my life, you know. Uh, I had zero interest in my own hobbies anymore. Uh, well, I'm doing this now, so I guess it's not zero interest, but video games, porn, all of that uh, just fade away. I don't know. Uh, I, I am still very depressed. But talking to people in VR chat is helping me a lot. I'm not a patig anymore. Uh, if for anything, uh, talking to people is helping me a lot. And every single time I talk about this traumatic event, uh, I feel like uh, this traumatic event has less power open over me, you know. Uh, but anyway, thank you for listening. If you ended up, and see you later.